Hi, this is Wallace from Capturing Reality. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use cross-polarization to improve the quality of your scans. This video is meant for users just starting out in photogrammetry who are interested in techniques to improve their results. It is intended as a follow-up to the video tutorial making a complete model in reality capture, which will be referenced in this video. See the description for a link. One of the biggest problems we face when scanning objects is glare and reflections, which can obscure details and distort measurements, leading to poor quality alignments, meshes and textures. The cross-polarization method involves using polarizing filters on both the light source and the camera lens to minimize reflections and glare, thereby improving the overall quality and accuracy of the photogrammetric data. Polarized filters are shaped like a Venetian blind, light can only pass through the gaps when it has the same orientation as the grid. When the light leaves the flash, it is unpolarized, and then it hits the filter and it is polarized horizontally. Then the light hits the object, and most of the light that comes back from the object will be unpolarized again, and so when it hits the filter on the camera, it will pass through, now with vertical polarization. The exception is the reflected light or glare, which will bounce straight back, keeping its horizontal polarization, and so will be blocked by the vertically polarized filter in front of the camera. How do I go about getting a cross polarization setup? First of all, get a circular polarized filter for the front of your camera. For all intents and purposes, this can be considered a linear polarizer. Circular polarization is added after the linear polarization so that your autofocus will work. You need to find a way to polarize the light coming out of the flash. To do this, you can order a ready-made filter from a specialist who will 3D print it. You might also be able to find 3D printable files for your ring flash and build your own, or just buy a sheet of polarized film, cut it to size to cover your flash, and stick it down. You can adapt your setup depending on your budget. If you have a very low budget and still want to try this workflow, you can buy a sheet of polarized film and use some sticky tack to attach it to the flash and the lens on your phone. Peel off any protective film, as this will unpolarize the light again. If you lose track of the orientation of the polarization, just place one piece over the other, and if it goes black, that means they are oriented correctly. Make sure you force the flash to be on and scan the object in very low light so that the flash provides most of the light, as the ambient light in the room will be unpolarized. Another advantage of using cross polarization is that you can do something we call void capture. This is when the only thing with matchable features in your images is the object that you are scanning. Just scan your object with a jet black background. This is normally done using a black cloth and is often used when using a turntable. Because no specular reflections will go into the camera, the images will be as if they were already masked and so there would be no need to go through the masking process from the making a complete model video. Just make sure you have an isolated image of your object from every angle. Once the object is scanned, you can process the files in reality capture, just as you would process any other images. You should find that you will get superior results, not only for meshing, but also for texturing. Areas that previously had moving specular highlights, which will confuse the algorithms, now have quality usable data. Let's do a quick comparison of these scans in Reality Capture. Here is the original scan from the original video with no cross polarization. And as you can see, it's actually pretty good. This is because it's a mirrorless camera, which is very high resolution, 60 megapixels. Um, but you can see there is noise on the surface and a lot of the details didn't pick up very well, particularly these black plastic areas here. But the whole object is at least a little bit shiny in almost all places. So let's have a look at the cross polarization version using the same camera. And there you can see you've got a far superior mesh. It's pretty smooth. Um, we can compare the alignments also. It's quite interesting because in the cross polarization version in this component, we've got almost a million points. And if we go back to the original, we have only 286,000 so you can see you get far better alignment because it can see all those features a lot better. So now let's take a look at the one done with a mobile phone um, and as you can see here 
it's actually pretty good because this mobile phone is only 12 megapixels. So you can see cross polarization has really helped. Um, it's got all the major shapes down um, pretty good. It's not as high res and yeah, there's still um, some noise. But if you had a mobile phone with higher resolution, then you could definitely get um, comparable results to using a mirrorless camera without cross polarization. So I think it's time to have a look at the textures and it's the combination of the mesh and the textures which really makes this worthwhile. So let's turn on the, actually we're going to use these 200,000 um, triangle models. Um, what I did on every single model is first I simplified to 200,000 and then I smoothed and the results end up um, pretty similar with for all the radios. Let's go to the cross polarization one have a look at the smooth version of that it's well it's, I'm sorry it's actually significantly better um, and the original uh, there we go so let's have a look at the original texture um, and there you go you can see we've got a lot of stuff baked into this texture you can see the reflection of the sky here along the top there and especially on, on the side here and lots of shadows on, on the face here. So we'll look at the um, cross polarized version. Let's turn on texture there. And there it's, um, there's no shadows and uh, there's no reflection as well as a little bit, um, but it's uh, a lot more usable um, than the not cross polarized version. If we go to the mobile phone version, uh, there we go. Again, we've got a better, more usable texture to take into other software. So um, I then took all of these models into Unreal and we can do a comparison over there in Unreal Engine. Here we are in Unreal Engine and you can see the three radios here. And on the left, we have the cross polarized one done with the mirrorless camera. In the middle, we've got the mobile phone version, cross-polarized. And on the right, we have the original model, which was not cross-polarized. And you can see that um, we're using sunlight. Uh, the cross-polarized one is looking the best, but the texture's a lot better on the even the mobile phone one at 12 megapixels than the original one done with the expensive mirrorless camera. Just rotate around the models a little bit for you to see. Um, even the plastic on the cross polarized along the top doesn't look too bad. Um, it's a bit of a mess um, over here and we've got the baked in lighting there, um, especially on the shadows on the grill there. And then this one here looks pretty odd. I'm um, just going to swap to a closer light, just turn the sunlight off and you can just have a look here. There you can see this baked in light look, looks a bit odd there. And then on the front of the grill, um, the shadowing is odd when we compare it um, to over here. Looks a bit better even on the mobile phone one. And things are starting to look a lot more real on this one. Um, I made the same material on every single radio, which obviously is a little bit odd because it has the same roughness value the whole way over. I didn't spend a huge amount of time on it. Um, anyway. There you go, that's the comparison in Unreal Engine. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.